All right, part C says let g be the function defined by g of x is equal to f of x for all x between negative 5 and negative 3 inclusive and x plus 7 for negative 3 less than x less than 5. Is g continuous at x equals negative 3? Use the definition of continuity to explain your answer. So um, first off, definition of continuity, what the heck is it? Uh, that This right here simply states that um, g of x is continuous at x equals negative 3 if and only if, this is the definition, usually don't have the extra if in here, it's sort of understood, but if and only if the limit as x goes to negative 3 of g of x is equal to g of negative 3, and they have to be defined. Okay, so we'll start by looking for the limit and piecewise function, so I'm going to actually look at a left-hand limit and a right-hand limit, so we'll say limit as x goes to negative 3 from the left of g of x will equal the limit as x goes to negative 3 from the left of, um, we had, let me double check on this, of f of x. 25 minus x squared. So I'll just put f of x, which will equal f of negative 3. We figured this out in part b. That's equal to 4. We'll also look at the right-hand limit. So the limit as x goes to negative 3 from the right of g of x is equal to the limit as x goes to negative 3 from the right of, I believe it was x plus 7, yes it is, of x plus 7. And this is continuous if we're in an interval, so from the right that limit will be negative 3 plus 7 equals 4. These together imply that the limit as x goes to negative 3 of g of x is equal to 4. We also need to find g of negative 3. That's actually pretty easy. g of negative 3 will equal, and let's look and see, when x is equal to negative 3, it's in this first piece, we evaluate that by evaluating f, so that equals f of negative 3, which we know equaled 4, square root of 25 minus 9, and all together, so therefore, g of x is continuous at x equals negative 3, since the limit as x goes to negative 3 of g of x is equal to 4, which is equal to g of negative 3.